Welcome to our Mass. Today is the feast day of St. Ignatius, Bishop of Antioch. St. Ignatius was a martyr. He died in Rome with other followers of Jesus. Before he died, he said he was a setting son on the way to God. God in mercy and goodness, give comfort to those who are sick on, and on their way to you. Amen. Please stand for our opening song.
the prophet Ezekiel. The Lord says this, I, the Lord God, will look for my people and take care of them myself. As a shepherd looks for the sheep that have wandered away, I will search for my scattered people. I will rescue them all from all places the places where they went on that dark and gloomy day. I will bring them black, back from the foreign countries and protect them on the mountains, in the valleys, and wherever they settle. My people will be like sheep grazing and resting in good pastures and on Israel's mountains. I, the Lord God, all powerful will lead them there and watch over them. I will look for the lost sheep and bring back the ones that have wandered off. If any are hurt, I will bandage their wounds. If any are weak, I will help them. If I will good take care, good care of my people, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Jesus 11 disciples went to a mountain in Galilee where Jesus had told them to meet him they saw him and worshiped him but some of them doubted Jesus came to them and said I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth go to the people of all nations and make them my disciples baptize them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to do everything I have told you. I will be with you always, even until the end of the world. Friends, the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Good afternoon. First of all, Keegan, great job, boy. Did it, you read very well? You read like I could, I could understand what you're reading, and you make the proper emphasis when you're reading. It's tremendous. Very good job, Keegan. And choir, excellent job also. Wow, you're singing. <laughs> Um, St. Ignatius of Antioch lived at the very early time of Christianity. He lived at a time when there were not yet too many Christians, but Christians were already spreading. Christianity has not yet reached America. <laughs> During that time, there were no Christians in, in mainland Asia or in the Orient, like Southeast Asia, China. There were yet no Catholics there or Christians, and also no Catholics or Christians in South America. The followers of Jesus Christ were all somewhere in the um, Middle Eastern areas or regions, all the way to perhaps closer to, as it spread, it, as it spread all the way to maybe Rome, which we know today as a big city in Italy, right? But it's also going, going, east and west so from Israel it was also going west it was also going east and so um, and then north it was also going north and so it reached a one one very important city where there were a lot of people it was a very um, a, a very populated community and that community is called Antioch huh? There were five places in the world during that time that had a lot of people who started to believe in Jesus. One of them, of course, as we said, was Rome. The other one, of course, as we said, is uh, Jerusalem, which was where Jesus, uh, you know, died and where Jesus really started to spread the, the gospel, the good news in that region. There's also one, how many of you know about Egypt? So everybody knows where Egypt is. Egypt, there was one city in Egypt that was also a center of Christianity during that time. It's called Alexandria, right? Then there's another one, a very big city somewhere in, um, in what we know today as Turkey. And the place is called, today we know it today as Istanbul. How many of you are familiar with Istanbul? Have you heard of Istanbul before? Yeah, no, no, yes. It's a very beautiful city. Very beautiful city. I was there in Istanbul um, about a few years ago, like four years ago now. Um, and then one of the other ones, one of the other five cities is called Antioch. And it's also in the same country as Istanbul. How many of you can tell me what country can you find Istanbul? Yeah? Oh, you're just scratching your head. How many of you might know? Yeah. Turkey. Good job. Good geography. Good geography. It's in Turkey. Istanbul is in Turkey, right? And so is the city called Antioch. Antioch is also today found in the, in the country called Turkey. It's not the Turkey. It's not the Thanksgiving Turkey. It's a country called Turkey. And there, there were a lot of Christians, a lot of followers. Now, St. Ignatius of Antioch was in Turkey, in, in Antioch, 
uh, but before he was in Antioch, there was another guy, very, very important, who was in Antioch before him. Do you know who this man is? One of the apostles? Who might it be yet? Yeah? No? Not, not quite yet? Yeah. Um, St. Paul was there too, but he, he, wasn't the, he wasn't the one that he fought, that, that was followed by St. Ignatius. But, but you're right, St. Paul was there also, right? But before that, yes, St. John, very close, very close to St. Paul, very close to St. John. Yeah, who is it? But actually, great, great answer also, because St. John was also in Turkey. In fact, St. John was with the Blessed Virgin Mary in Turkey. Who is it now? Okay, great. Good job. It is Peter. What is your name? What's your name? Huh? Jonathan. Let's give a round of applause to Jonathan. So, before Ignatius, before Ignatius, there was St. Peter. Who is St. Peter? He's the leader of the Apostles of Jesus. Very good, yeah. Yeah, so he's the leader of the Apostles of Jesus. And so when, when St. Peter went to Rome, okay, St. Peter died in Rome, right? St. Ignatius of Antioch took the place of St. Peter in Antioch. And then there was one thing that St. Ignatius of Antioch said that until today, we always use the, the word that we use today that is very, very important for us. What is that word? Not amen. Good word. <laughs> Anybody? Um, it, it, is, it is a word that refers to all of us today. It, it is a word that is used to refer to who we are. Anybody? Huh? Father, no. Who are we? All of us, I mean most of us, maybe most of us, not all of us, but many of us, yes. People? Yeah, what kind of people? What kind of Christians? Catholic! How many of you are Catholic? All right, good, 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 good. So, St. Ignatius of Antioch was the first one to use the word Catholic. Huh? To describe the people of God. He said, where the followers of Jesus are, there is where the Catholic Church is. Huh? He said, oh, what, what, does, what does the word Catholic mean? It is, the, it is the church that is spread throughout the world. It's a universal church. It's a church that has embraced all nations. That is a very beautiful name. And from that moment on, they started to refer to, to the believers of Jesus as the universal church, the people that are called to embrace all nations. So the universal religion. Why? Because during that time, religions were not universal. What does that mean? During those times when you say Roman gods, those are those gods that were only worshipped by Romans and there were many of them, right? Greek gods, like you know those statues that are like this? The Greek god? The Greek gods? The Greek gods are only for that? The Greeks, correct? Right? How about Jews? Who are the people who are called the Jews? Which what, what are the what are the what are those people? They're only for that? The, the people of a country. Is yeah. <laughs> So yeah, so when you say Jews, they were only for the people of Israel, right? So now when Jesus came, that is why it is important that we understand why did we choose this gospel reading today? The gospel reading today is very important because Jesus in the gospel says, baptize all nations, all nations. What do you mean by all nations? Everyone. Right? Baptize all nations, including what? Including Turkey, Greece, Italy, Germany, Africa, Asia, all of the, those are not countries, but anyways, South Africa, Philippines, yay, uh, Mexico, right? Rwanda, Nigeria, Brazil, Costa Rica, Colombia, Poland, Vietnam, 
What else? Bruti Lesotho. What else? U.S. of A. Yeah? Right. So, Jesus says, baptize all nations. It is now a religion that embraces everyone. It is the universal church. It is the Catholic church. So, from the very beginning, from the very beginning of Christianity, right, there were the Catholics already. Right? Some of you might wonder, oh, when did the Catholic people begin? Well, we are the original ones. We're the original ones. When Jesus built his church, he built his church on Peter, and that was the beginning of Christianity, and we are those Christians. We go directly from the root of the founding of the church by Jesus Christ himself, right? So, um, later on, there are other kinds of Christians. Yes, there are many other kinds of Christians. Today, we have many, many kinds of Christians. But we, the Catholic Church, we, the Catholics, are that come from the very root of the story of Christianity. And that is why we were there even when St. Ignatius called, called us Catholics. Now, why is this important? Why is it important to realize that we are universal church, we are Catholic church? Okay? I'll give you the answer. It is important for us to know that we are Catholics and what that really means. That means, therefore, that if we are Catholics, that we are not going to limit, we're not going to limit the ability of the gospel of Jesus Christ to be sent out and given to all kinds of people. If we are to be true about our being Catholic, it doesn't mean if you are American, Irish, German, Polish, Mexican, Guatemala. How many of you are Mexicans here? From Mexico. Or your family, your family are from Mexico. See, it doesn't matter if you were born in this country or you were born in Mexico or if you were born in the Philippines, just like me. We all are part of the universal church and therefore we have to be accepting and welcoming of one another. In other words, as, it, as the gospel of Jesus Christ is preached to the people of America, so it is also preached abundantly to the people of Mexico and also abundantly to the people of the Philippines and the other side of the planet. And we all receive the gift of God's love. We all receive, or we all together equally receive God's mercy. We all equally receive God's sacraments and gifts. We are all ex expected and called to go to heaven together. Right? So this is very important because, I mean, some of you definitely don't look like each other, correct? I mean, come here, come here, come here, stand here with me. Let us just come, what's your name again, bro? Eddie, Edward, okay, Edward and me. Do we look alike? No. Uh, right, we don't look alike. But, Eddie and I are brothers in the Lord. But we don't look alike. Can you tell me one difference? I'm taller. In, 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 in no, no time, he'll be taller than me, right? Okay, yeah. yeah. Our hair color. Yeah, what is this hair color? Blonde? Brunette? Is this brunette? Like, like dirty blonde. Blood. And this one? Black with a little white. <laughs> On the side. <laughs> good, that's a good difference. What else do you see different? Yeah. Different clothes. I wear awesome robe. He wears cool uniform. Right? Eddie, Eddie is a student, I'm a priest. What else? So, what is this eye color? I love them. The bees blue eye, right? What would you be from, Edward? What would your family be from? Are they uh, German? French? Irish? Scottish? Irish. That's why he has blue eyes. How about me? I, 
No, I don't have blue eyes, right? I have. Okay, not black eyes. I have brown. I have brown eyes. I have brown eyes. Very good. What one last difference between the two of us? Yes. Skin and color. Because I am white, and he is. I'm white, and he is. Why are you laughing? <laughs> what is my color? What's my skin color? Yeah. Huh? Tan? Oh, I like tan. <laughs> I like you a lot. I like you already. I have brown skin. You see? I'm very, I'm, brand, I'm tan. And he is? He's blue. <laughs> he is white. He is, a, he is a white kid. He is, he is, he is Anglo-Saxon. Okay, so, look, the, you mentioned enough differences between our colors. Because I am, my genes are different, my culture is different, and he, Edward's, Edward's genes and culture is also in some way very different from me. But both of us are... Brothers! Why? Because we have one... God, we, are, we have one Heavenly Father. And when God preached the good news to all nations in Christ, He gets it and I get it. Right? So, I cannot say, Edward, sorry, you're not going to the hell, you're not going to heaven. Because only me will go to heaven. What do you say? Edward will say, you lie. I will go to heaven and you go to heaven. And we both help each other to go to heaven. So later on in your life, when you meet more people who look different from you, speak different from you, talk differently from you, have different eye color than you, have different skin color than you, have different hair color than you, does it really matter? No. What matters is that we are all going to heaven. That is very important. Amen? And if we... Huh? It's correct. Oh, bro, my bro, my bro, my bro. He says what matters is what's going on inside of you. That is what matters the most. That is what God looks at, what matters inside of you. And so today, as we celebrate St. Ignatius of Antioch, we celebrate the fact that we're so different from one another. And yet, at the same time, we're very, very, very the same. Amen? St. Ignatius of Antioch, pray for us. St. Ignatius of Antioch, pray for us. St. Ignatius of Antioch, pray for us. A round of applause for Edward. Yay. Please stand. Because God listens to all our prayers. Because God listens to His universal, all-embracing church. Let us now offer our petitions, our intentions, our needs, our desires, our longings to our Heavenly Father.
Que te apetece. Acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and all His holy church. May this oblation and our homage be pleasing to you, O Lord, just as you accepted Saint Ignatius, the wheat of Christ, made pure bread through His martyrdom and passion, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new, and offer us sure signs of your love. And that your sacred mysteries may be fulfilled, their great example lends us courage, their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we do give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim.
In a similar way, when some of us ended into the chalice of once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only sing a word, and my soul shall be healed. the Lord on the feast day of St. Ignatius, renew us, we pray, and make us Christians in name and in deed, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's, before we go, let us say thank you to our uh, third graders. Yes, third graders for helping us celebrate Mass. The teacher and the one that have come to for this. Thank you everybody for helping us our our service today for uh, their good job. Thank you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yeah.